Good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Jason. You'll excuse the poor lighting. I'm shooting this a little bit earlier in the morning. I'm trying to get these out a little bit earlier to you so that you can possibly watch them before you head off to work. Today in our daily devotional, we are doing Acts 23. Acts 23, great chapter. Let me pray. We'll get started. Father, thank you for your word and who you are. And may we be courageous and diligent to represent you well, Father. We thank you for your son Jesus and his sacrifice for us. We thank you and praise you in your name. Amen. So Acts 22, here we go. I am reading out of the New American Standard Bible. You read along in whatever version you'd like. Verse 1, Paul, looking intently at the council, said, Brethren, I have lived my life with a perfectly good conscience before God up to this day. The high priest Ananias commanded those standing beside him to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God is going to strike you, you whitewashed wall. Do you try sit to try me according to the law and in violation of the law order me to be struck? But the bystanders said, Do you revile God's high priest? And Paul said, I was not aware, brethren, that he was high priest. For it's written, you shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. But perceiving that one group were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, Paul began crying out in the council, Brethren, I am a Pharisee, son of Pharisees. I am on trial for the hope and resurrection of the dead. As he said this, there occurred a dissension between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, nor an angel, nor a spirit, but the Pharisees acknowledged them all. And there occurred a great uproar, and some were saying, um, some of the scribes of the Pharisee party stood up and began to argue heatedly, saying, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. And as a great dissension was developing, the commander was afraid Paul would be torn to pieces by them and ordered the troops to go down, take him away from them by force, and bring him into the barracks. Remember, these are the, the Romans, right? So, uh, anyway, verse 11. But on the night immediately following, the Lord stood at, the so at his side and said, Take courage, for as you have solemnly witnessed to my cause at Jerusalem, so you must witness at Rome also. When it was day, the Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves under an oath, saying that they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who had formed this plot. They came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a solemn oath to taste nothing until we have killed Paul. Now, therefore, you and the council notify the commander to bring him down to you as though you were going to determine his case by a more thorough investigation. And we, for our part, are ready to slay him before he comes near the place. But the son of Paul's sister heard of their ambush, and he came and entered the barracks and told Paul. Paul called, called one of the centurions to him and said, Lead this young man to the commander, for he has something to report to him. So he took him and led him to the commander and said, Paul the prisoner called me to him and asked me to lead this young man to you since he has something to tell you. Well, the commander took him by the hand and stepping aside began to inquire of him privately, what is it that you have to report to me? And he said, the Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down tomorrow to the council as though they were going to inquire somewhat more thoroughly about him. So do not listen to them, for more than forty of them are lying in wait for him and have bound themselves under a curse not to eat or drink until they slay him. And now they are ready and waiting for the promise from you. So the commander let the young man go, instructing him, Tell no one that you've notified me of these things. And he called to him two of the centurions and said, Get two hundred soldiers ready to bring by a third Get 200 soldiers ready by the third hour of the night to proceed to Caesarea with 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen. They were also to provide mounts to Paul, to mounts to put Paul on and bring him safely to Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter having this form. 
Claudius Lasaius, to the most excellent governor Felix, greetings. When this man was arrested by the Jews and was about to be slain by them, I came up to them with the troops and rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman. And wanting to ascertain the charge for which he was, they were accusing him, I brought him down to their council, and I found him to be accused over questions about their law, but under no accusation deserving death or imprisonment. When I was informed that you would, that there would be a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once, also instructing his accusers to be, to bring charges against him before you. So the soldiers, in accordance with their orders, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. But the next day, leaving the horsemen to go on with him, they returned to the barracks. When these had come to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they also presented Paul to him. And when he had read it, he asked from what province he was, and when he learned he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing after your accusers arrive also, giving orders for him to be kept in Herod's Praetorium. So our four questions that we're dealing with this week, right? How should this scripture affect me? What steps should I take to uh, towards that change? Who needs to hear the scripture? And in what way can I tell it to them gracefully? Again, I'm going to say it again. We deal with our own heart first so that way if someone does need to hear it we're bringing it to them from a place of humility and discipleship that you're going to walk alongside them as they grow closer to the lord when we look at this set of scripture when i look at it for me and these are all personal questions i'm going to give you my personal answers you know how do i need how should i be affected by this change uh, this passage and how should i step towards that i see this and I look and I, as I read, I see that God has even bigger plans that maybe even Paul first thought of and how some of the things that are negatively swirling around Paul, you know, the plot to kill him, his being beat, beat up and arrested. And he, he uses all that circumstance for the good, for the good of the Lord and the, the spreading of God's kingdom. And he takes comfort, I think, to a certain degree when, you know, the Lord's telling him, hey, look, you're going to go to Rome. You're going to do the same thing. You were faithful in this. I'm going to make you faithful in something much larger. So for me, as I look to that in my own life and I look to, you know, the different things that I have dealt with even over the past month, you know, like, oh, man, I recognize maybe, you know, like, on prednisone and it makes me all grumpy for the past month maybe i didn't handle that as best as i should you know how do i how do i resolve now i gotta i gotta resolve now to handle being frustrated better right i gotta handle being uh you know the different things that are happening in life better and more gracefully so that i am given an opportunity to maybe do something much larger later on and then questions three and four, who needs to hear this scripture? Who needs to, what do we need to, uh, how do I tell it to them gracefully? You know, I think personally, like, man, all Christians need to hear this scripture. And I can think of a specific group of people right now that I'm not going to share on the internet, but um, I want to, I want to bring this to them and talk about you know, being faithful in the opportunity and the struggle that we have now so that we can be uh, given greater opportunity later. What about you? How should, how is this passage affecting you? He's got the gospel close to his lips. I hope it is for you today. I hope you're having a fantastic morning and I hope that you are going to be a blessing to those around you. Have a good day.